Peer help me, help me an awful lot. As a, as a peer, as a, as a, as guidance, guidance towards towards me more than anything else. I can believe in me like more than anything else. I suppose believing that I could stay clean and I I could break this cycle of of robberies and of committing crimes 24/7 and basically harming myself all the time. You know, put myself through unnecessary life of torment. You know, but uh. But Pierre was there for me and he, he stayed by me and I think that's what's the most unique thing about Pierre McVeary is that he has, I wouldn't call it empathy, I'd call it love for humankind, that's the only way I can describe it. He has a, a special kind of love for people that nobody will ever understand unless, unless maybe he has shone a bit of that on you, you know, like there's not many people in this world you could smack in the face and they tell you turn the other cheek like like Jesus says in the Bible. There's not many people who could do that, but this man does this on an everyday normal level. He does this all day, every day. And it's it's very, very hard to understand unless you're you're in them offices like where Pierre stays, does his work all the time. And surrounded by twenty individuals that have unmerciful problems, like serious problems that need to be dealt with. And he takes them one by one, and it's like it's like a teacher to his students, you know, the way he lets it out. Like he guides them in every way, shape, or form. Like you know, how have you been doing all day? Um, you know, not much. Yeah. Not much. Like there's nothing to do. You want to find something to do, though, with the old education centre we have up there. Exactly. That's. You can do it your computer. So you're interested in an art. I can. Do, I can. I can work on like? any computer because I have mine. What would you like to do? Done. What would you really like to do? At the computers, moment, the because day. I know if I can do, get well on computers, I'll get a job with computers. Yeah. And I have nine computer cards done, I can work any kind of computer and type fast and all that. And I can do all that. Yeah, well, we'll organise that now. We will have a you know what I mean? He used to clean the offices and that. Now he's basically. Uh, he counsels me. And he's not qualified to counsel that, but he counsels me. I, I pull him all the time aside about something, feeling sad, or pull him aside and feel, oh, I feel like doing this, like, but I'd be hard to myself, you know. That's my friend, my okay. buddy. Yeah. Air play to buddy. I'll have no problem having that chat with me. I'll, yeah, and I'll see him Monday morning, you'll stay safe for the weekend. I'll go down to that council, yeah. I'll go down to the council today and have a chat with him. Yeah, I promise me. Probably you'll try your best to that now, like, yeah. And that's been our safety. You should, because like, it's only going to end up... It's called it's full I want, but when it gets down to it about that much, I'm going to probably just get rid of that. Yeah, but try tomorrow now not, not to do it. Not I won't do that, I know myself I won't. You know I, mean? I know myself I won't, you know what I mean? Trust yeah. me. Yeah. I'll have a chat with the council, and when it's like... Yeah. Myself sitting there, when yeah. It was you. When yeah. like, we were talking, and my mum was trying to explain council, and I'm like, you know what the council is. Yeah, I know what the council is. Don't you talk with them, always come away a bit. Yeah. A bit happier, a bit yeah. like good. It's after being given yeah. to somebody else. Yeah, do you know what they I mean? They can deal with it as well as you. Right. Nice and well, yeah. I'll be friend. I'll see him on the end. Oh, you'll see him on the end. Right, be good. Four and a half years ago, he came to the residential care centre for a number of days placement on his release from prison. From being a person who used the service, he's now a person who has an input into how the service is developed. So he's come full circle in the sense that he was in jail uh, and has ended up here working to the same people or the like of the same people that uh, he would have been in jail with. But, I mean, that's what more can you say. I mean, that's, that's fantastic. People judge people when they come out of prison and they're not often willing to give them a second chance. So that's something that a person's got to battle with to try and find a job and um, you've got to explain where you were. And if you say, if you tell the truth, in some cases that's the end of your chances of getting a job. Some people do take a chance um, and give people an opportunity. And, and most people in those situations will take them. Every person's got to work out their programme and what will keep them drug-free if they have a drug problem. And a big part of that is uh, doing treatment properly and addressing not only the physical problems of addiction, but also the psychological issues, the underlying causes of why somebody might have taken drugs in the first place, and to understand how a person's mind works when addiction takes hold, and it's um, always a danger of relapsing, so a person needs to stay in touch with the, 
the, the supports that will prevent them from relapsing. A big part of that is a normal routine away from drug lifestyle, so uh, having uh, a job. I think having relationships um, outside of, of a drug uh, circle, if possible. That's not always easy because a lot of these people who break away from drugs, a lot of their friends might still be using, some of their family may be using. So it's a, it's a difficult balance between keeping old friendships uh, and finding new ones, and particularly the old ones when maybe some of the, the, the old friends or old family members are still using drugs. So they're, they're some of the real challenges that people face. I think it's a real heroic struggle for anybody who uh, is trying to come off drugs. Yeah, Adriobi. Ask him how much you know, Gary. Yeah. Hey, That's if they have now. Well, that's what happened. They had to say they had the real man. You need a few options then, Paul. How's it going, Em? I was just wondering if they had a double round for tonight or something. Like that. Okay. Do you, um, do you have any numbers there that you think it's a vacancy? Would you have any numbers that you think would have vacancies? No. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye -bye. What got you in this situation that you need accommodation like? Well, well it's after happening today. My girlfriend's at the phone. I don't know. So my girlfriend's ma. She's at the phone now when I'm ma. Mm -hmm. So she's at the phone now. It's that they drive us after me out of the house. So can happen that easy, it's just a click of a finger and it can happen. It's not a nice thing to go to at all. Look, I advise anybody like, that thinks about leaving home and uh, they just they try and talk to people. You know what I mean? Talk to their man and dad or something. Do what they tell them. Because this life is not... It's, this is... You wouldn't give a dog's this life. You know? Like I'm coming off drugs now, and now I have to pull up with this as well, you know. Like I'm coming, I'm now coming off heroin now the last seven days, and I have to pull up with this. You know, it just plays with your head. You just have to. I don't know. I just have to try and walk it, understand what it takes happen. And all the lads in it down in the office would have the utmost respect for Father P. McFerry. A lot of the lads refer to him as their father. Because that's all they know. He makes everybody feel accepted. It's hard to describe what way that he, he, uh, he touches the lads. Every single day of every day of their lives, he touches them in a certain way. Even if you're in a room with Father P. McVerry, and he's not speaking, and everybody else is speaking, he knows that you're in this room and you're safe. And you're there, and you're presentable. Like you're presenting there, but he knows most of all that you're there. He arrived in here today. I don't think there'll ever be another person that, that be as, as unique as Father Peter McVerry. He's done an awful lot for me, and he's, he's had to do an awful lot for all the lads around here. And his legacy will live on forever. <laughs>